Hey everybody, Buzz Miller Wannabe Studios here. Today, we're going to talk about the most intimate part of your guitar. The part that you're going to feel, the part that you're going to touch the most. And what is that? That is actually the back of the neck. You are going to come in contact with that way more. And this is usually what tells you if you love a guitar or hate a guitar. If it's that guitar you always go to, or one that you pick up and it just doesn't feel right. There's three issues with the back of the neck. First one is the size. How thick is it? How wide is it? Second one is the shape. We're going to go over the different shapes in another video. Today we're going to be talking about the third, which is the finish. Now, why is the back of the finish, the back of the neck finish, so important? Well, we're going to take a quick detour. I build boats. I build race boats and race cars, but I really like building race boats. The kind of race boat I build is called a flat bottom means you've got a lot of the boat in the water at one time. Don't have a hydroplane where it's designed to stay out of the water. These things sit in the water. What we've learned is the slowest bottom or the slowest finish you can put on the bottom of a boat is perfectly glossed finish. If you can get that thing perfectly mirror, that's as slow as your boat is ever going to go. As you sand that, you're making it more rough. Now, you think, well, perfectly smooth is going to be the fastest because there's, there's nothing to hit. Well, that's not the case. What we do is we're looking at what's called surface area per volume. We're not going to get too complicated on this, but the amount of the boat that's touching the water at one time. As you sand this finish, you're going to have air molecules trapped. You're going to have less pieces of the bottom of that boat touching the water. And you're thinking, that's not a big deal. We've actually tested boats and seen a seven mile an hour difference from a perfectly smooth finish to a rough finish that we want to see. Um, golf balls. We don't build a round golf ball. We put divots in it. Why? Because the air resistance over the surface is too great with a perfectly round golf ball. We put the divots in there to decrease the surface area per the volume of the golf ball and it doesn't grab the air as much, lets it fly further, lets the spin catch the air less so you don't hook real hard left or right, or actually slice left, hook right. Um, is that, that's backwards. I think you slice right and hook left. I guess it depends on if you're a left-handed golfer or a right-handed golfer. Who cares? <clears throat> so, I have just painted this Carvin DC600 up so we can demonstrate. Now, I've done two things with the finish of this. Um, you probably can't see from this camera angle, but I've got some silver glitter in the paint, and then I've got a blue that actually turns to purple and teal. It's color change. I put a little bit of the color change pearl in this. So we're going to see how the different finishes we put on the back of this neck are going to adjust the different finishes. Now, I put the glitter down here on the bottom, and I put just the color change up here so we can see the difference. Okay, so we get the guitar, we're thinking we're cool, we start to get a little bit of sweat, and we find that our finger doesn't run up and down the back of the neck very well at all. Some people pick up a guitar and go, I hate this, I can't have that guitar, throw it out, or I don't want to buy it, or whatever. Stop, not so fast. We can take two minutes and make the back of that neck feel the way we want it to feel. If some people say, oh, I, I like the, the raw wood on my finger, most people don't really know that it's raw wood. They just like that rough finish because you get a little sweat and you still glide just as well. Now I'm already telling that when I rub my finger up and down this is starting to catch and grab because it's just too, too perfect, too polished. So we're going to play around with a couple of different finishes. If you want just a little bit less, but you like to keep all of the looks of your guitar, because as you sand this, it's going to become lighter. We've got a nice black guitar, and you know it looks all like patent leather. So as we sand this, it's going to get a little bit lighter. Now, as it gets a little bit lighter, and as we sand it with a little more rough sandpaper, we're going to see some of the effect of the paint is going to start to disappear. So if you've got a guitar that's got a pearl finish or a, or a flake finish, as you sand it, it's going to lose a little bit of that. Same thing with the matte clears. You put a matte clear over something, it loses a little bit of that uh, character. You lose some of the pearls you put in it or some of the beauty of the different woods. You know, you've got a, a quilt or a, a, a nice 
flame, you lose a little bit of the definition when you put the matte clear on it, just the way it is. So, I'm going to go and I'm going to sand this down and come back and we're going to talk about different finishes of sandpaper. Now the one thing I do want to talk about, don't start sanding, don't just go crazy. So we're going to do three different sandpapers. We're going to do a 600 grit, we're going to do a 1000 grit, and we're going to do 1500 grit. If you need to find out where these sandpapers are, you usually go to a paint store or the paint section of your local hardware store, your local Walmart, whatever. You're not going to find it when they do cabinet refinishing. You're going to find 320s and 400s and 150s and that kind of thing. That's too rough for what we're going to do here. Fine for the bottom of a boat, but we're going to want to stay. Uh, we're going to go maybe 400. I'll do a little spot of 400, but 400, 600, um, 1,000, and 1,500. And we're going to discuss how much of the effect we're going to lose and how it feels on our fingers. So don't throw that guitar away because it's got a gloss finish back. We can fix that in two minutes and one piece of sandpaper. So I'm going to come back, talk a little bit more about it, and show you what it did to the different parts of the neck. We'll catch you in just a second. Hey everybody, we're back. I just sanded this baby up. So let's talk real quick. First of all, I did not have any 600 grit sandpaper. I had 800. So the jump between this and this is pretty large. Um, 400, 800, 1000, 1500. The first thing we see, there is certainly a color difference on the 400. You can actually see the gouges in the clear. Um, 400 is going to be as close to with what I'm doing here as the back of a maple neck guitar. So if you like that feel, you're going to like this. Again, it's on the back. I'm up, I'm playing, the lights are shining, all that kind of stuff. You can't see that the back of the neck is all sanded up. So I don't really mind a 400 on the back of a neck. The 800, you're starting to be able to see that the, uh, the silver sparkles are actually sparkling back. Here you can see dots, but they don't really do much. Here they're starting to sparkle back. You can't really see the purple uh, color change yet, but um, it's got a good feel. Again, you bring your finger over to here and then over to here. The difference is amazing. So we go to a thousand. A thousand and eight hundred is not a huge difference, but I can start to see a little bit of purple in here. Big difference between a thousand and fifteen hundred. This, you can tell the color of the guitar. It looks like maybe just a matte clear, which is actually pretty close to what it is. Um, you can see the purple. You can see it changing to blue. I'll put some high resolution pictures um, so we can tell the detail and I'll post them in this video. So, can you go thicker than 400? Yes. Do you want to? You can, but be careful. And here's why. It's also a direction of how to sand any of these. You don't want to sand through a layer. You just want to sand until the, the gloss is gone. As Soon as the gloss is all gone, you're done. Don't sand anymore. So, let's say you're taking 180 or 120 grit and you're sanding and you sand through the clear to the next layer of paint. What's going to happen is the oils of your hand and the um, moisture from your hand when you're sweating can actually get underneath the clear into the next layer and the clear will start bubbling. You don't want that. That's why, A, we don't sand too hard. Just sand till the gloss is gone. And two, don't go with too thick of a sandpaper. Um, I've done, done 280 successfully, but that's because I put the clear on and I know I put a lot of clear on these things. Um, 320, I would say, is probably is as coarse of a sandpaper as you want to go. You're not going to tell the difference that much between 400 and 320 on the back of the neck, seriously. Close your eyes, you probably couldn't notice the difference. Now, why would you not go with a 1500? 1500, like you said, is very close to matte clear. So it, you can tell the effect, you can tell the look, you can tell it doesn't quite have the, um, the gloss the rest of the guitar has. But while your finger is going up and down this neck for the next year, it is actually like a little bit of sandpaper and it's trying to polish that up. If you start with 1500 or if you start with 2000, you're finding that it's going to start getting sticky after a while and you think, wow, I got to re-sand it. If you don't mind doing that, then great. If you want to keep it looking real pretty on the back but just a little matte finish, 
sand it with 1500, and then a year from now, sand it again with 1500. But the reason I don't sand with 1500 is I don't want to re-sand it because my finger and I, I tend to really grab onto these things and bend hard and press against the frets. So um, I tend to polish the back of the neck pretty quick. So that's the back of the neck. That's how you sand it. Again, don't sand through, just sand till the gloss is gone. As soon as the gloss is gone, you're done. So we're going to talk a little bit about this guitar. This is a Carvin DC 600. Um, I had somebody just recently email me and tell me Carvin is out of business. That could not be any more incorrect. Carvin is still in business. Carvin Guitars was started a billion years ago. Um, Jeff Kiesel, who now runs the Carvin Guitar Department, his grandfather started it. They started making pickups and they were called Kiesel. There were some issues, some licensing stuff, and they changed the name to Carvin, and they've been Carvin all this time. Well, Jeff adores his grandfather and remembers when he was building this stuff, and he changed the name back to Kiesel. But they are both Kiesel guitars and Carvin guitars. They are still in production. Buy one today. In fact, if you buy a brand new one and you ask, they will put Carvin in the headstock for you, or you can have Kiesel in the headstock for you. Either one. Now, if you're looking for a good fully custom guitar with a lot of cool effects, a lot of cool paints, a lot of cool options. Check them out online. Um, probably of the custom manufacturers right now, my favorite. Um, this guitar was actually not brand new to me. I bought it off of eBay, but um, I knew I was going to hack it up and do this video and change pickups and do a bunch of other things. So um, I'll have this thing finished in about a week and I'll show some pictures and maybe do a video on it. So I hope that helps you because when you find that guitar and everything works perfect and everything fits perfectly and you really want to love it, but there's just something that you hate about the way it feels, it very well could be the back of the neck if it's, if it's painted. So a little bit of rough it up with the right sandpaper and boom, now it's all smooth. Now it's really fast. People talk about, oh, a fast neck because it was really thin. I don't tend to see that. I've got a couple of original wizards that are about as thin as you can get, and I've got some baseball bats in here. I don't see one being faster because it's thinner. Now the back of the neck, I see faster when I'm trying to, to change octaves really fast and my thumb's sticking across the back. I think this makes it more fast than making a thin neck. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, email me directly, put them in the comments. I'll try to answer anything you've got. If you have any questions about what you want to see in the future, any ideas, give me a holler. Thanks very much. Keep on rocking.